Okay, gang, I think this is going to be pretty good. This is from the Wrestling Flashback channel. As always, support them all you can. <laughs> Lots of great content. This is 10 dark moments that WWE want you to forget. And immediately I'm wondering if we're talking shoot moments or worked moments. Or possibly both. I don't know, but this, this, this should be good. It's plenty of... Whichever way it goes, plenty of Wrestling moments WWE would rather we forgot. Ah. Angles, some of which have aged yeah. badly and come off as crude and distasteful. I'd love to slap you across your face, but it looks like God already beat me to it. There are play oh, that's rough. Because you guys know JR has Bell's palsy. Oh, ho, 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 Taz. I got to believe that one was, was work, though. I don't think, I don't think Taz... Would have hit him with a shoot like that. That had to be worse. Well known cases where things got uncomfortable. Oh my. Terrorists are going to burn down That's the not, Undertaker's house. Not uncomfortable. Children are going to be kidnapped. But today, we're focusing on. No, <laughs> nothing was ever too out of <laughs> out of pocket for McMahon. That either flew under the radar or isn't talked about a lot as we highlight 10 dark wrestling Oh, and yeah. Movies. What was her Mark Henry. What was her name? Oh, shit. The whole Triple H, oh, with the corpse, I can't, oh, man, it's trying to tip my tongue. I don't even want to say tongue when thinking about that whole thing and how it went down. Vic, Vic, no, it wasn't Vicky. Shit, I can't remember. Media story <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, guys. The likes of China and May Young, but there's also that some segments cool. you might not remember. Come on. Such as the angle where Henry and the nation. May Young and Mark Henry China was awesome. Look set to have their way with the ninth wonder of the world. Mark Henry. Pucker your damn lips and give that piece of trash the thrill of her life. Following this, Mark began his... I got, I got to... Now, see, it's wrestling. And, and, and again, I've been in the business forever. So you're used to the way we go about things. It was funny to me. But it was funny because it was so cringe and so uncomfortable. Infatuation with China, which led to a gimmick change for the world's strongest man. After becoming sexual chocolate, Mark continued yeah. to feature in X-rated segments. Including I got a penis <laughs> that boy, Mark. I love Mark Henry. <laughs> Sexual chocolate was, was brilliant. Numerous therapy sessions after Henry admitted he was a sex addict. I'm a sex addict. What? What did he say? You guys got to remember too, though. This the timing on this was perfect. Because they did the whole thing with Mark Henry and he's, you know, he was playing that role. I'm a sex addict. That's back when guys, big name people like Wade Boggs were using that as an excuse for all their womanizing and objectifying of women, so on and so forth. That became a thing. I think South Park did a whole episode about it and everything. The, you know, uh, I'm a sex addict. It's, it's out of my... It's something I can't control. I'm a victim. <laughs> During these sessions, Henry revealed his first time having it's a disease was at age eight with his sister. Before there was, later saying there was that a bunch they continued of to have more relations than... together long after. After the sex therapy Wade failed, Box. Mark helped Viscera win a human trafficking match against the Godfather, which gave Vis and the world's strongest man control of the hose. It took a relation. <laughs> human trafficking match. <laughs> See, to a lot of people, that probably would be super offensive. But again, it's just my sense of humor and my sensibilities being ra you know being in the business for so long. That's just that's why it's funny to me because it is so the offensive. With May Young for Mark to finally change his ways. Henry impregnated May, who later gave birth to a hand. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Soon after, the world's strongest man was sent down to the WWF developmental territory, OVW, in an effort to lose weight and rehone his skills, bringing an end to his time as sexual chocolate. On top of her work with... <laughs> Come on. Sexual, sexual chocolate was awesome. It was dopey. But again, there was there was actual some social commentary within it with the whole... You know, sex addict thing. Henry, sex China addiction. later featured in another non-PG storyline, this time <clears throat> with Chris Jericho. Their feud included a violent segment where Jericho kidnapped China and tied her up backstage. Y2J then proceeded to attack the then Intercontinental Champion with a hammer, breaking her thumb in the process. <laughs> wow, that's pretty extreme. It's rare to see such wow. a torturous angle like this in wrestling, especially since just, it involves a man assaulting a woman. I just thumb China. 
<laughs> but again, that's that's the nature of it. What makes it entertaining, what makes it crazy, is the ridiculous nature of it. ...with a deadly weapon. It's the type of segment you'd expect to see in a personal blood feud rather than a throwaway <laughs> big card one such as this. Given how much the WWF were pushing the envelope during the Attitude Era, this segment often gets forgotten. And you know what it is for me too, guys, and I remind you guys, it's something I had to look back on and understand myself. When I stopped wrestling, I was bummed about the fact of not being able to be in the ring anymore, and I didn't watch for long periods of time. So there's a lot of this stuff that slipped by me for a long period of time. Perfect. As we've seen, the World Wrestling Federation was at its worst. <laughs> it's it all comes most around. Controversial during the Attitude Era. There was no telling what crazy things would happen from one week to the next. There are countless more examples of risque moments and comments that flew under the radar. Putting that big this retarded man is gay. Tooth, they don't come any more retarded than that. But you put his brain in a parakeet, zing, fly backwards. This is where zing, fly backwards. And and you do have to. And I'm not making excuses for them. They don't need anybody to make excuses for them. They did what they did. Um, but things like using the what we refer to now as the R word. Back then, there, there was no nothing attached to that word that made everybody go, oh. Right here. I'll be damned if I get in a ring with a damn fairy. Ron <laughs> Rod Simmons. Like I say, you have to remember time frames. Like your shirt. I want you to come, darky boy. Well, that's, I mean, you can find that offensive, but that's, that's been used as angles in wrestling forever. The, the race issues, that's whether it's black and white or Asian or uh, <laughs> Middle Eastern, German. That might be. A <laughs> that might be a little bit much, King. Jesus Christ! I never heard that one. Come on, dude. <laughs> and, okay, I got to stick by it. I said pushing boundaries is pushing boundaries. I would not have said something like that. Well, of course, there's nothing I find more vile and disgusting than <laughs> than victimizing a child. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have with been the JR. In various moments that have not aged too well. Oh. I had Dr. Hung Lo. <laughs> Never mess with the Hung Lo. Now you get the fat ass out of here. Right? You, you get the fat ass, ass out of here. You have a copy of the Pakistani magazine. Even after the Attitude Era had come and gone, the WWF continued to produce controversial television, such as when Batista had relations with Melina in December 2005. <coughs> Melina had slept with the animal in hopes that doing so meant Dave would no show the planned main event where he and Rey Mysterio were set to challenge Eminem for the tag titles. Batista instead thanked Melina for the warm up and said he was going to destroy Mercury and Nitro. We have a deal, right? No, no deal. Thanks for the warm up, though. Batista. <laughs> well, that that just falls under the category of sometimes deals go wrong. I mean, it's nothing new in the world to have somebody back out on a deal that was made. <laughs> And Ray ended up winning the match to become the new tag <coughs> champions. Me. The next week, Melina prepared a written statement with her attorney and spoke about how Batista forced himself on her after she'd rejected his advances. I told Batista to stop. Uh oh. He did it. Melina and that was way before the Me Too movement. That would, yeah, that that would have gotten everybody charged up and ready to start the cancellation pro just handing out cancellation tickets now she was suing the animal for sexual harassment even though what she described was a more serious charge melina enlisted the help of mark henry to protect herself from batista dave denied the harassment allegations during a segment where henry appeared to question batista on what he would have done if mark had molested him instead she never said no she never said stop what if it was the other side what if it was me Taking advantage of you. The angle came to an abrupt. Good question. What about that, Dave? <laughs> End a few weeks later. 
after Batista was forced to relinquish the World Heavyweight title due to a legit injury, thus facing a lengthy spell on the sidelines. Oh. Life appeared to imitate art as Batista <coughs> and Melina me. began to date in real life around this time, and it was a relationship that caused a lot of controversy backstage. The WWF previously... I didn't even know about that. Uh, Batista and Melina, I didn't... I didn't did not even know that was a thing at one time. He featured the topic in our last example on an episode of Raw at the end of 1999, when Triple H was said to have drugged, married, and then consummated his marriage with Stephanie McMahon, all of which was that I remember. Will. Stephanie was later revealed to have been in cahoots with Triple H, but for a few weeks, it was believed the game had performed each of these acts on his own accord. All right, Triple H! But see, the thing of it is, too, with, with the people that do get upset about it, and I know most wrestling fans are just like, yeah, it's a business. It's no different. We know what goes into making a professional wrestling show. We know how the WWE goes about doing business. So any of this stuff is absolutely no different than if it were presented in a movie or a TV show. Many fans forget that just weeks before Hunter marries Stephanie, DX appeared to kidnap Steph backstage and subsequently have their way with her. However, on the next episode so. of SmackDown, the girl involved was revealed to be a drama student disguised as McMahon. Billy Gunn still claimed to have had intercourse with the student, but Triple H assured everyone she was just acting. That broad was not acting because I think I punctured one of her lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Did we really have to go to puncturing or lung mulch? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's always like, okay, you guys are pushing the boundaries here, and then somebody will go, well, not quite far enough. <laughs> WCW were a promotion that also conducted several distasteful angles, such as when they exploited Scott Hall's <clears throat> alcoholism in 1998 in a storyline that has been widely buried by fans. Whose life has fallen apart. Oh, wait, whoa. I've seen it all. A little beverage break. Yeah, we. That's called art imitating life. It, again, a lot of people may be uncomfortable with it in the in the world of professional wrestling and the storytelling, the outrageousness in storytelling that they do. I don't know why anybody'd be surprised by it. The WWF also acknowledged Scott's drinking issues during his rivalry with Stone Cold in 2002. <laughs> One thing that might be forgotten about this feud is that Hall was on alcohol medication at the time, where any exposure to alcohol would make him ill. So it raised concern when Austin poured beer on Scott in numerous oh, off the air that would ring be... segments. This annoyed Kevin Ash, who had previously informed the WWF that would, brass that, would that Hall had been taking be a bad idea. Apparently, Nash said this on the night of the NWO's return at No Way Out. However, there are conflicting reports that Scott went out partying with the Godfather after the paper. Of you. Another yeah, I mean, with the issues Hall had, it certainly would be a possibility that he was out partying anyway. I didn't even know that, that there's a medicine that would react to just being around alcohol like that. I don't get around enough. I don't know enough about these things. Another risque WCW angle involved Randy Savage, his girlfriend, Gorgeous George, and the <clears> worm, <throat> Dennis me. Rodman. On the July 26, 1999 <laughs> Nitro, Rodman kidnapped Gorgeous George. From there, he... Wait a second. Dennis Rodman being involved in something creepy? No. Brought her back to his trailer and violated George against her will. Unlike our previous entries covering this topic, Rodman was said to have actually gone through with the act in kayfabe. Once you go black, you never go back, baby! <laughs> One of the few other times this type of crime occurred in wrestling was when Brian Pillman had control of Terry That's... Reynolds for 30 days in 1997, resulting in the infamous XXX file segments. Then there was the time that Kane forcibly planted his seed in Lita in 2004. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's storylines. That's how I always try and look at it. Do you see story? Do you see a storyline like this on NCIS, <laughs> or maybe not, or any of the detective shows? Or my wife watches all that, um, that like murder porn. It's all those real life stories that uh, basically tell the story of some woman being abused by her husband and killing him. If if I end up dead mysteriously, you guys, it's no mystery. She's 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 got all the knowledge she needs. It is what it is. Now, I mean, if, if within the, let me be clear, if, if within the confines of putting on the show, 
if somebody went too far and actually did take advantage of someone else, that, that's obviously a whole different story. Of the WWF's you know, if, if somebody shoot takes care, already. takes advantage of one of the women. One of the catalysts for the company toning down aspects of the product and changing how they present segments. It occurred on the October 4th, 2004 edition of Raw. The show was significant not just because it emanated from the legendary Madison Square Garden, but also okay. because many of WWE's sponsors and corporate parties were in attendance. Therefore, oh, Vince oh. McMahon wanted all the talent to be on their best behavior. With that in mind, giving Ric Flair a live mic in the opening segment probably wasn't the best idea. Best behavior night. Who should we bring out first? Let's do Flair. <laughs> okay, yeah. Good call. <laughs> Flair and Triple H open rule to talk about the upcoming should have, should have imported New Jack for a, to work a match, too. Pay -per -view. Rick ran down his opponent for the show, Randy Orton. Nage called Orton a virgin at Killing Legends before Flair then told us what he personally does to virgins. The line enraged Vince McMahon due to its graphic nature. Uh. Because of the corporate presence at the show. I look at you and say, Virgin, and you know how many virgins I have made on the network. Oh, Rick! <laughs> yeah, Rick. Rick Flair going uh, outside, coloring outside the lines. And you almost got to blame that on Vince. You, you put the, the mic in his hand. Raw. Rick's promo has been edited down so as to remove the virgin's bleeding line. Former WWE head writer Brian Gerwitz spoke about how Flair's Yikes. comments on the night changed Vince's attitude towards the approval process when it came to promos. When he said that, there was a noticeable shift in the amount of uh, the approval process. I, the WWE I would believe have there might have been. In yeah. 2008, <laughs> and one of the last edgy storylines they did before going. Damn, damn it, Flair, you ruined it for us. <laughs> going PG involved Michelle. Michelle McCool and her on-screen boyfriend at the time, Chuck Palumbo. Domestic abuse hasn't been explored too often in wrestling, and any time it has, naturally, things haven't come off well. The Palumbo and McCool storyline also came off in poor taste. It began after McCool inadvertently oh. cost Chuck multiple matches. Palumbo reacted angrily each time. Meanwhile, McCool was seen sporting a black eye, hinting that Chuck may have struck her off-screen at some point, although this was never brought up or... Yeah, that, um... I now for me this is strictly my taste do i think they should be allowed to do storylines like that if they're they want to and they're willing to take the heat for it absolutely uh, is that something i would find that works well within the confines of telling a pro wrestling story nah not really it, it, oh, well, a lot of this stuff is stuff maybe i wouldn't have booked myself but i understand why they did it but yeah there, there's a lot of there's a lot of areas here where it's like there are better ways you could have told the same story, I think. Palumbo his heel turn after Michelle was caught in the crossfire of his assault on Jamie Noble. Following this, Chuck continued to torment McCool while also destroying her new boyfriend, Noble. The storyline was eventually dropped. Palumbo continued to wrestle sporadically thereafter until he was released by WWE whilst he was recovering from a shoulder injury. Had this angle took place in the Attitude Era or even a few years prior, it would have been far darker. But by 2000... Yeah... Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I can see how that would make some people uncomfortable. But the thing of it is, with the WWE, you do a story angle like that at your own peril. If it offends enough people and they turn away, that's that's how... Uh, that's how the business works. This one felt outdated. When Given the, direction the WWE fans will let you know if you've gone too far. I thought that was just tasteful. I get it. I'm playing a part, so I did what I was you know, paid to do, and then where do you go from there? It's rare to see animals involved in wrestling, much less a storyline. Al Snow and his dog Pepper's feud with the Big Boss Man is one of the most infamous examples. Try not to get one of them uh, that? paws stuck in your teeth. 100% grade A Pepper. No, no, no. Tastes like chicken. However, Jake Roberts and his snake Damien's rival... <laughs> That's a little mess. Wow, I had to have the PETA folks <laughs> ready to storm the castle. Yikes. With Earthquake, <laughs> came first and was just as grim given what took place. After their match, Earthquake tied Roberts up in the ropes, forcing Jake to watch his snake Damien being attacked. Obviously, there was no snake in the Oh, I do bar. remember this. It was this. actually pantyhose yeah. stuffed with 60 pounds of hamburger Oh, is that what it was? Burgers. The next month, Earthquake <laughs> appeared on an episode of Primetime Wrestling where he fed... Vince McMahon, Bobby Heenan, and Lord Alfred Hayes. After giving each man a few bites, Earthquake revealed they had just been eating the remains of Damien. Now, if you enjoyed this video, that's be sure pretty to good. Check out See, video on ten of the craziest wrestling pranks caught on camera. Have a oh, that'll be a good one too. See, for me, uh, it's tough because I try and I have a very twisted sense of humor anyway, and I think a lot of that was influenced by being in wrestling locker rooms. So I have a very twisted sense of humor as i said so i try and look at it fairly and not just from my own perspective it's like how would this affect someone else but the thing of it is again it's a free market deal 
if they go too far, they'll pay the price when people stop buying their product. Most of those stories, though, to me, I look at them as the same way I would a movie or a TV show. It's a storyline. 